In my last video, I reviewed the Magic X040. While decent for what it is, I also got the sense that folks might find more use uh, trying dual screen emulation on their phones. The problem is that the easiest method is typically to emulate either one screen at once or both screens side by side. From my experience, both cases are awkward and don't quite provide the full dual screen experience, either due to lopping off one of the screens or disrupting intended gameplay. That's why in this video I'll go over some easy methods to turn your single screen device into a more comfortable dual screen emulator. First, uh, let's talk some background to the setups. Unless I mention otherwise, these setups are platform agnostic. I've used them with both my iPhone 16 Pro Max and a good selection of my dozen or so Android phones. Devices with a Snapdragon 855 or newer will typically be okay for 3DS emulation, while any mid-range phone from the past decade or so should be able to handle DS emulation just fine. The only platform-specific caveat I'll offer is that I'll use MagSafe for a few methods. For Android phones, consider attaching a middle ring to a cheap case as an adapter, or getting a case with the rings embedded. Having that extra material has actually been a godsend for keeping my Pixel 8 Pro on its charger at night, so highly recommend it. When considering control schemes, I'd recommend a Bluetooth telescopic controller. Bluetooth is key for versatility with these setups and also makes older phones or oblong devices easier to set up. I personally enjoy the GameSir G8 Plus for its comfort and feature set. Cheaper options like the GameSir X2 and 8BitDo mobile controller will also do you well. I'll have links to all of this stuff and everything else I mentioned in this video down in the video description if you need it. Although nothing should be particularly hard to search for yourself if you want. Okay, with the initial setup materials out of the way, let's get to the first setup option, vertical play. The initial problem with trying to play dual screen games horizontally is that one screen ends up off center and one screen ends up crunched. Games that extend across both screens also don't tend to look right played this way. So easy solution, just rotate the phone vertically to stack the screens. As those who have used Delta on iOS know very well, certain DS games can easily be played with stacked displays and touch controls alone. Unless you have a really small phone, it's a viable solution in a pinch. But we can do better. Touch controls fall apart the moment any sort of action starts or precision is needed. To compensate, we can just add a telescopic controller with an adapter. For my setup, I have a metal ring slapped onto the back of my G8 Plus with a double-sided magnetic ring attached. Bent over the front, so the top magnet's in just the right position to mount my phone. From here, I adjusted the virtual display locations and turned off on-screen controls. It's all fairly well-balanced, even with the heft of my iPhone 16 Pro Max in a case. Now, if you want to fine tune this even more, there are a variety of adapters on Etsy that'll fit that purpose. Some use full-size controllers like the G8 Plus, while others adapt Joy-Cons. Either way, I've seen lots of folks happy with those setups. Although, before you jump to adapters, I might recommend trying out the metal rings first if you can. Beyond being a cheap controller adapter, they also work great as kickstands, finger holds, and desk mounts. There's a lot of versatility in this small design, even beyond emulation. And that versatility continues when considering the next setup method, double phones. Now, fun fact, anyone with a spare Android phone hanging around also has a spare portable monitor. All you need is a cheap capture card, some cables, and a UVC app to interpret the signal. The double magnetic rings still work great as a mount here. As long as you launch your games through Delta, Drastic, or Citra MMJ, you're golden. It's a proper dual screen setup whose main downside is maintaining the battery between two devices. Better yet, it's an easy way to repurpose old tech that might otherwise just be collecting dust somewhere. There are a couple extra caveats to this though. First, only Android phones can be used for the top display. For whatever reason, Apple doesn't allow its phones to receive UVC inputs. Second, the bottom display needs to be capable of at least mirroring its display when plugged into an external display. If you have a phone with a USB 3.0 port, it's very likely it has that capability, 
but test it before buying all the accessories. Third, you might have to fiddle with the capture card a bit. My card of choice is the Genki Shadowcast 2. It's a versatile device that I enjoy due to its reasonable recording capabilities and ability to let me play systems like my Switch 2 using my laptop display. The downside is that it's occasionally had trouble working with certain devices due to its own set of quirks. If that happens for you, there are an abundance of similar options on the market. They're just a bit less compact. As might be expected, a setup like this can also be kinda top-heavy. Phones are comfortable for the top screen, but tablets likely won't work. The magnetic rings weren't exactly built to handle setups like this, so your mileage may vary. If you want a bit more leeway with weight and spacing, you can try Mechanism's phone mount, plus one of their MagSafe innies. Mechanism specifically makes their products for this sort of setup, and it tends to be a bit more reliable as a result. If you happen to have a Steam Deck, ROG Ally, or any other handheld you're willing to slightly modify, they also sell adapters to use your phone as a second display with those devices. I'm a huge fan of their work and highly recommend checking them out if you're looking for unique mounting methods for small electronics like this. Of course, the entire second phone setup assumes that you have a second phone lying around that you can just use. If you don't, I probably wouldn't recommend spending a ton of money to pick one up just for a purpose like this. Instead, consider a wireless display. This wireless monitor from SmallRig has magnets on its back for easy mounting, both with metal rings and mechanisms mounts. It's also very lightweight and built to slap onto the back of a phone typically as a viewfinder for the camera. It honestly has a pretty comfortable setup. For the few hours I've spent playing on it, latency has felt surprisingly low for a wireless connection, likely thanks to it connecting directly via Wi-Fi. I've had the connection drop out once or twice, but that's par for the course with wireless displays. You're ultimately trading reliability for convenience here. The real downsides are more so based on use case. The small battery inside lasts for about two to three hours, enough for a standard gameplay session, but still quite low. The display is also smaller than I'd like. Since these types of displays are meant to fit on the back of a phone, they purposefully aren't as big as they could be. Considering it's not a touch display, using it as the top display for dual screen emulation on my iPhone 16 Pro Max isn't optimal. However, I don't hate it, and it does pair well with smaller phones. And then, finally, not all phones work with a display like this. My iPhone and ROG Phone 3 work fine, but my Pixelate Pro fails to cast to the display, and my CMF Phone 1 doesn't cast correctly using Drastic. Meanwhile, my Fold 4 works fine, but it has a noticeable render delay. Small rigs pretty upfront about all this on their listing on Amazon. I'd recommend taking that warning to heart if you want to go this route. If any of those downsides strike you the wrong way, there are a variety of similar displays available for purchase on sites like Amazon. SmallRig just happens to be a brand I'm familiar with. Try sifting through those listings to see if they're any better match. Although, you can also try alternative mounting solutions for a larger display. By dipping your toes into the world of camera mounting gear, you'll find a variety of phone and tablet holders, hinges, and field monitors. If you can find the right combination that isn't too top-heavy, it works out quite well. Especially if you also have your own YouTube channel or stream on Twitch, camera mount setups can easily be a part of grabbing extra gear for your production or repurposing what you've already purchased. For demonstration, I have a Ulanzi phone clip attached to my GameStar GA Plus, and connected to a small rig hinge, mounted via a cold shoe. That then connects to my field monitor, which has a removable rechargeable battery. Right angle connectors and USB-C to HDMI adapters then handle all the video out cabling. It's a setup that works well and isn't as top heavy as you might think. The most difficulty I've had with this is just fiddling with the hinge angle and making sure that the display's centered. Minor complaints, really. 
If you're the type of person who already has gear like this lying around, I'd recommend trying it out. But if you're not into video production, well, the price associated with getting all this gear plus the controller might be better spent saving up for a Retroid Pocket 5 with a dual screen attachment. And that's kind of the crux of all this. If you're considering buying a ton of accessories that you'd only use for dual screen gaming, you might find that you'd save money opting for a dual screen handheld these days. Each of my setups include items I use either in video production or everyday life. The metal rings make watching videos during my lunch breaks much more comfortable. Genki's capture cards have recorded gameplay footage for the past few videos after my Elgato card stopped working. Mechanism's mounting gear has been great for mounting my phone at eye level, adding a second screen to games, and just being a part of many of my projects. Think about what adapters and gear could not only make dual screen emulation more comfortable, but also support you in your everyday life. That way, even once you've moved on to other types of emulation or devices, won't be pure waste, you know? Those are my thoughts though. Now's the time when I ask for yours. Did you try any of these setups and want to share your experience? Um, or do you have other versatile setups you think folks should consider? Let me know down in the comments. As always, if you found this video interesting or informative, go ahead and give it a like to let me know. Then get subscribed for more dual screen emulation videos in the very near future. I definitely think there's a fine line between a setup like this being a gimmick and actually usable. Mounting a full field monitor to your phone likely crosses that line, but uh, double magnetic rings is probably a safe bet in my book. I think it's all about what's easy to jump into and what gear will be useful after you've moved on, you know? But that's going to be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. Until next time, catch you later.